I just think you need to learn more than I can teach you, Mom said. I mean, come on, Augie. You know how bad I am at fractions. What school, I said. I already felt like crying. Beecher Prep, right by us. Wow, that's a great school, Augie, said Lisa, patting my knee. Why not Via's school, I said. That's too big, Mom answered. I don't think that would be a good fit for you. I don't want to, I said. I admit, I made my voice sound a little babyish. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do, Dad said, coming over and lifting me out of Mom's lap. He carried me over to sit on his lap on the other side of the sofa. We won't make you do anything you don't want to do. But it would be good for him, Nate, Mom said. Not if he doesn't want to, answered Dad, looking at me. Not if he's not ready. I saw Mom look at Lisa, who reached over and squeezed her hand. You guys will figure it out, she said to Mom. You always have. Let's just talk about it later, said Mom. I could tell she and Dad were going to get in a fight about it. I wanted Dad to win the fight. Though a part of me knew Mom was right. And the truth is, she really was terrible at fractions. Driving It was a long drive home. I fell asleep in the back seat like I always do. My head on Via's lap like she was my pillow. A towel wrapped around the seatbelt so I wouldn't drool all over her. Via fell asleep too. And Mom and Dad talked quietly about grown-up things I didn't care about. I don't know how long I was sleeping, but when I woke up, there was a full moon outside the car window. It was a purple night, and we were driving on a highway full of cars. And then I heard Mom and Dad talking about me. We can't keep protecting him, Mom whispered to Dad, who was driving. We can't just pretend he's going to wake up tomorrow, and this isn't going to be his reality. Because it is, Nate, and we have to help him learn to deal with it. We can't just keep avoiding situations that... So sending him off to middle school like a lamb to the slaughter, Dad answered angrily. But he didn't even finish his sentence because he saw me in the mirror looking up. What's a lamb to the slaughter? I asked sleepily. Go back to sleep, Augie, Dad said softly. Everyone will stare at me at school, I said, suddenly crying. Honey, Mom said. She turned around in the front seat and put her hand on my hand. You know, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. But we spoke to the principal there and told him about you, and he really wants to meet you. What did you tell him about me? How funny you are, how kind and smart. When I told him you read Dragon Rider when you were six, he was like, Wow, I have to meet this kid. Did you tell him anything else, I said? Mom smiled at me. Her smile kind of hugged me. I told him about all your surgeries and how brave you are, she said. So he knows what I look like, I asked. Well, we brought pictures from last summer in Montauk, Dad said. We showed him pictures of the whole family and that great shot of you holding that flounder on the boat. You were there, too? I have to admit, I felt a little disappointed that he was a part of this. We both talked to him, yes, Dad said. He's a really nice man. You would like him, Mom added. Suddenly, it felt like they were on the same side. Wait, so when did you meet him, I said. He took us on a tour of the school last year, said Mom. Last year, I said. So you've been thinking about this for a whole year, and you didn't tell me? We didn't know if you'd even get in, Augie, answered Mom. It's a very hard school to get into. There's a whole admissions process. I didn't see the point in telling you and having you get all worked up about it unnecessarily. But you're right, Augie. We should have told you when we found out last month that you got in, said Dad. In hindsight, sighed Mom. Yes. I guess. Did that lady who came to the house that time have something to do with this, I said? The one that gave me that test? 